In this lesson, we'll look at placing structural columns to support our home. So we currently have a grid layout, and on that grid layout, we'll place two structural columns that will support our first floor from the basement up. Now the column locations will be located on grid line C and where it intersects grid line six and also grid line eight. Those will be the two locations for our structural columns. So to add a structural column, let's go to the architecture tab. On the architecture tab, you have a column dropdown. Now there are two types of columns, structural and architectural. The structural column is for supporting the structure. The architectural column would be a more decorative column, such as in an entryway. Go ahead and click on structural column. Now for this example, a column is already preloaded into this Autodesk Revit project. And I can see it's pipe column with a pipe and a schedule number 40. Now let's say you didn't have a column loaded and you wanted to load one in. To do that, on the ribbon, click load family. When you click load family, Revit will open up the actual library of where all of your families are located. In this case here, let's double click on the folder called columns. Once you double click column, you can see various different types of architectural columns that are listed. But let's say you wanted a structural column for carrying loads. Go ahead and go back up one level by clicking the up one level on the right. Now, depending upon the version of Revit that you have installed, you may or may not have all of these details. So if I scroll down, I may have a folder called Structural Columns. If you do, double click the Structural Column folder. Now, inside of that will be subfolders for this particular type of material the column is made from. And inside of that are your standard structural steel column types. Now the one that I have over here on the left, you can see it's pipe column. So if we wanted to look for something similar or see where this would originated from, go ahead and click pipe column. You'll see a pictorial of it on the right. Now with it highlighted, click open. Now since this is a structural column, it will next list all of the available sizes you can load into your Revit project. Now I wouldn't load them all because that takes up space and increases the size of your actual Revit file. So I'd only load in the ones that you would want. As you scroll through, you could see the various different sizes and it lists the gauge. It also lists the overall length, outside diameter, and inside diameter. And those are indicated by the actual column headings. So if I wanted one for let's say four and a half inches, as an outside diameter, I could scroll down to where I see pipe four. This actually is the one that we're looking at up here. So if I try to load this now, it will load or ask me to overwrite the existing one. So at this point, I'm just gonna click cancel. That would be the method of how you would go about adding in that pipe column or that structural column. Now, a few things to set before we actually place the column. Now, the first thing is, since this is a circular column, I don't have to worry about rotating it. So you don't have to check mark the box on the options bar. The depth is set to go down and we're gonna leave it at that because I'm on level one or the first floor. So I want this column to go down all the way from it to the basement. Now, if basement is not selected, choose basement on the option bar. That will draw the column down from level one or the first floor down to the basement level. Now on the ribbon to the right, we're placing a vertical column and what we want to do is we want to place multiple columns at once and we want to select the grid lines. So I'm going to click at grids on the ribbon. Now with that done, Revit is waiting for you to select the grids and where the grids intersect, it will place a column. So first I'm going to select grid line C. With grid line C selected, hold the control key down and then select grid line six and then grid line eight. That will place two columns at those intersections, C6 and C8. Last step is to simply click Finish. Now when you click Finish, you may get a message on the very bottom saying that those columns cannot be seen in this view. That's because they're going down from the first floor and the actual cut plane on the first floor is above that. So if you get the message, just hit the X to acknowledge it. Click Modify to end the command. 
Now, to see the columns, we would want to go down to the lowest level to see those. So the lowest level the column is attached to is the basement. So in my plan views in the lower left, double click basement. When you do, zoom in and you'll actually see those two columns. Another way is to click the 3D view or the house on the very top of your screen and you'll actually see the 3D pictorial of the two columns. If you open those two views, simply just X out of those on the right to close those to go back to the first floor plan view. So as a review in this lesson, we created columns at the intersection of our grid lines.